Briefing an instrument approach in a busy cockpit is a balancing act of identifying all the important information in a procedure without overloading your already tasked brain. Paper charts and their electronic copies give you everything you need and plenty of stuff you don't. ForeFlight has just released a new tool that changes that, and this video, delivered by Flight Insight, will dive into it. On this scenario, we're flying IFR into Austin Executive, shown on the moving map as KEDC. We're flying along an airway on our filed route, talking to Austin Approach on 127.22. They've just told us to expect the RNAV approach to runway 13, starting from the Texas intersection. Let's bring up the procedure by opening up the flight plan bar, then tapping procedures for the procedure advisor. We'll select Approach, then the RNAV 13, which brings up the plate. Then we'll choose the Texas transition as assigned by ATC. The root of the approach with this transition is overlaid on the plate. You can see the minimum safe altitude is indicated with a circle of 25 mile radius overlaid onto it and the altitude indicated as 3,100 feet. We also see the different approach minimum options depending on if we're shooting the LPV, LNAV VNAV, or LNAV, or the circling only approach. The minimums change depending on what category we're flying and you can see the speed ranges of each category to make selecting hours easier. Switching from A to C increases the circling MDA, for example. We'll keep it on category A for our Cessna 172 and select the LPV minimums. The procedure and plate are loaded in. The dynamic procedure sidebar automatically opens after adding the approach so we can brief it right away. Before doing that though, let's build the procedure into our avionics. We'll load the RNAV 13 into the GPS, again from the Texas intersection, and we'll set the decision altitude bug to the DA of 870. After we have the frequency set up and we've bugged the altitude at Texas of 2,500 feet, ATC tells us to turn left direct Texas. We'll activate the approach. We'll first activate it on the GPS, so we can turn the aircraft towards the fix. After that, we can activate it on ForeFlight. We'll do that by tapping the approach bubble on the flight plan up top, then tap Activate Approach. And now, to help us brief it, we'll pull up the Dynamic Procedures sidebar by tapping the square icon in the top right of the screen. We'll also tap Profile up top to see the profile view of the approach overlaid. We can simply brief by reading from top to bottom. We're using a WAS-enabled approach with a final approach course of 126 degrees. The touchdown zone elevation is 620 feet. We can ensure we have all the frequencies set up. AWAS is on COM2 active on 118.82. Austin Approach is who we're currently talking to on COM1 of 127.22. Executive Tower is on COM1 standby on 120.3. And Executive Ground is on COM2 standby on 119.45. Let's give the notes a read through. LNAV VNAV is not authorized for uncompensated units below negative 16 Celsius. It's almost positive 20 Celsius today in Texas, even up here at altitude so we won't worry about that. There's a helicopter note we won't worry about. Pilot controlled lighting, if needed, is on 120.3, and the approach profile of 34 to 1 is not clear of obstacles. This would only apply for an LNAV approach. Now, here's the route itself. As you can see, we're given only the fixes along the route that apply to our transition. Fixes on other transitions like DART and CUSAT are omitted. Even though they're included on the plate, the dynamic procedure feature leaves it off for us here to cut down on clutter. You can imagine what a convenience this is on complicated departure routes with many transitions but only one path relevant to our flight. At this point, we can really clean up the view by hiding the plate with a tap and bring it back just as quickly with another one if we need to double check any details. For our brief, we're doing Texas first at or above 2,500. Then we're maintaining that minimum altitude to thesis, the intermediate fix. After that, we turn on the approach course to ICOGSI, which is the final approach fix, as indicated by the Maltese Cross. We'll be at or above 2,200 there. After intercepting the glide path, we should cross JIDKI at or above 1,380. This step-down fix isn't only applicable to the LNAV-only approach, so it's kept on the dynamic procedure because we selected LPV. After JIDKI, we go down to our LPV decision altitude of 870 feet, which is a height of 250 feet. We need three-fourths of a statute mile of visibility to continue. The missed approach is to climb to 2,200 direct to Sermo and hold. We can preview the approach end of the runway using the included 3D views here. 
We can also view the fully interactive 3D airport and toggle night mode for a better view of the runway lighting we can expect. This would be what we'd see in daytime IMC as well. It's a huge advantage to know which side of the runway to look to see the pappy lights when you break out of the clouds. The dynamic procedures sidebar will adapt its presentation for what you've selected on the approach. If we tap change approach to re-enter procedure advisor and switch to the LNAV only minimums with category C speeds, the procedure will now update from showing the LPV decision altitude to the missed approach point for the LNAV runway 13 and have a new visibility of 1 and 3 8 mile and MDA of 1,080 feet. If we switch from going direct to Texas to getting vectors, which happens often with ATC instructions, and switch back to CAT-A, we see the route update to only include the final approach fix, the step-down fix at JITKEY, and the missed approach point. We'll return to the original instruction of doing our full transition from Texas. Let's skip forward in the flight. We're going to cross Texas, the initial approach fix, descending to 2500. Then, when we arrive at the intermediate fix, thesis, we see our aircraft position referenced on the profile view up top, giving us an idea of where we are in relation to the vertical dimensions of the approach. This is a massive situational awareness gain for pilots now that we can see the actual crossing restrictions and descent angles for the approach. Keep in mind that the aircraft vertical position here is based off of GPS derived altitude, and we should still ensure that our indicated altitude and glide slope guidance are appropriate for the approach. So as we've seen, Dynamic Procedures gives us a custom view of our approach tailored to what we're actually flying. By specifying transitions, speeds, and even inoperative equipment and off-field altimeter settings, we can have briefing items relevant to our flight without the clutter of non-relevant information. If your briefings can use some streamlining, for flight dynamic procedures is an essential tool to help out in the cockpit.